the standard manufacturing switch gun. Let's check it out. Guys, I love innovation, but I love something that's very practical. Uh, one of the things about self-defense is sometimes you have to be very discreet. And so we are taking a look today at the standard manufacturing switch gun. Uh, this is made in the USA, very similar to North American Arms or the previous Freedom Arms, little five-shot mini revolver. Uh, these are really small and easy to put into your pocket. And then with the built-in grip, it just locks down. It's a very small package and you can't tell what's in the pocket. The great thing is when you need it and you bring it out, it's easy to deploy. Uh, very solid grip on it. A lot of times those North American arms, especially they have the small grips. Now you can get the larger grips. You know, I have one of the Pugs, 22 Magnum. It's a great little gun, but I really like the way this flips out. So while this is based on an existing design, I think there's some things here that set it apart from a lot of the other offerings. It's all stainless steel, it's five shot, it's 22 Magnum, and guys, in your pocket, it's a little pocket rocket. And we really appreciate Standard Manufacturing Company for sending the switch gun for this review. It's just hit the market, and again, it's just fun to see these really unusual little firearms that are very useful come out uh, for whatever self-defense situation you wanna handle. Standard manufacturing switch gun, uh, definitely reminiscent of your North American arms or the original Freedom Arms, little mini revolver, it's five shot. But again, the biggest thing about this one is its action, deployment action. We can get it straight out. Uh, it's very quick, just use this small lever and we're ready to go. All stainless steel construction, very beefy for a really small little revolver. It is single action, it's in 22 Magnum. Let's go ahead and make sure the gun's unloaded. Just pull down on your cylinder rod, and then this just pops out, and you have, again, five shots. You load it from here, and then we put it back in. Just kind of line it up a little bit. Put your cylinder rod back in. It's a little tricky at first to pull down, and it's spring-loaded right here. And that just locks it into place. We have our trigger right here. Uh, the grip itself, you push it up, and that disengages the lock and it clicks into place. I think on some of the models that I've seen on the standard manufacturing website, they have flats on the cylinder, but this is perfectly round. Um, and the barrel is about a half inch. It's really short. This gun is really made for up close and personal. You're not gonna get a lot of velocity out of this, but it's definitely very Great just to pop out. It's really quick and then pull back on the hammer and you're ready to fire once the gun's loaded So it's really easy just to pull out now take the grip push again This protects the trigger and it just makes it a really uh, Uniform kind of feel to it. It doesn't look like a gun And that's one of the big things about this that makes it so easy just to slip into your pocket with it's your pants pocket your jacket pocket if anybody sees it, they'll probably think it's your keys or something else. It just takes away that silhouette. And guys, it just slides right down in your pocket. I mean, you don't even know it's there. Pull it out. Of course, these are pretty deep pockets in these Carhartts. And then you're ready to go. Uh, and of course, in a jacket pocket, you can put it there. It makes it a easier to deploy as well. Stick in your back pocket. I mean, there's a number of different things you can do with this. 
right here this little groove fits right down here into the bottom of the grip and you'll notice when I deploy that little latch it just releases it when we push it forward that little latch just snaps hammer has nice serrations on it uh, your sights are just a gutter sight that comes down or a little groove right there in the top and then there is a small little fiber optic rod it's red but it's buried into the frame and to be honest we weren't getting much light there I think that either needs to be expanded or there needs to be some viewpoints on the side or something to let that light come through because even in bright sunlight we really weren't being able to pick that up now when you look down through that groove you can see the dot and that's what we actually lined our sights up with um, so that is one thing that I would really like to see maybe improved I don't think that would be a big deal to mill that out a little bit, plus if you ever need to replace it. But encapsulated in here, it's going to protect it. But I think that that is something that definitely is a con in my opinion. Right here is our barrel. There are some notches in it. I'm not really sure why those notches are there. Uh, but the barrel is really only about a half inch. So it is really small. Now again, this is in 22 Magnum. And to be honest with you, with that short of a barrel, you're not going to gain a lot uh, ballistically out of 22 Magnum over just 22 long rifle. But it does make a really small package. The grip is a high impact polymer. Uh, it's two piece. Inside you can see where the gun itself just kind of folds down. And it just locks and once it's locked it's not going anywhere this thing is locked down and it gives you a full grip on the revolver and so to me especially when you have some of these little north american arms they can be really small the grips are small uh, this is one of the pugs and we're going to do a little comparison with it in a minute but you can see it is really difficult to control even though the recoil is light and and the recoil is light on this one as well but it just gives you more of a solid feel to it and it just allows you to be able to get those shots and while you're cocking that hammer it gives you a little more leverage down here at the grip here at the back it's just flat smooth again all the way around and then you have some texturing here on the side but really the recoil is so light and the way it molds in your hand uh, when you're shooting it you have a really good hold on it but really overall the quality seems to be really nice on this uh, these are made in new britain connecticut uh, and they make a number of different guns, some really high-end 1911s and Colt single-action 45 replicas. But they also make the Thunderstruck, and we did a review on their, what I call the Baby Tommy gun. It's a semi-automatic 22 rifle. And I'll have it annotated right here if you want to take a look at it. And they also make the DPS-12. So really, standard manufacturing has a number of different firearms. Now, to me, this is a good, this is a really quality piece. I mean, it's good and solid. It's all stainless steel. Uh, the lockup is really nice and what i love though to me is just how easy it is to deploy now here we have one of the north american arms pugs it is in 22 magnum as well it does have this larger grip on it and it's not too bad at the range it is small it just kind of fits into your hand really small but yet you know i like this i've been carrying this for years this particular one has nitridium sight on the front and then a small little raised sight at the back, which is different for a lot of the North American Arms pistols. But this one, of course, doesn't have that. Now, one thing that both of these have is a little notch in the cylinder. And you'll notice there's a large little gap, and then there's a small gap. And you want to fit that small gap into the hammer where it nestles in there for the firing pin. That way, it makes it drop safe. Uh, if you're carrying this thing with it, directly on a round it can fire and it's the same thing with the switch gun it has those notches as well and so you just want to make sure that you line it up to be right on that notch but the north american arms does offer a grip that kind of folds down but then you just deploy it this just makes it a lot quicker uh, but you know these are really good quality guns and um, you know again they've been in business for a long time but i think it's nice to see some competition it always helps and it keeps North American arms on their toes. The weight on the switch gun, 8.8 .8 ounces. Weight on the North American pug, 6.6 .6 ounces. Now right here is your trigger. Very minimal, very close to the frame. I might like that a little bit more out just so I could get to it. But to be honest with you, when we were at the range, we didn't have any trouble finding it. And with these guns, you have to first pull the hammer back because they are single action. And so once you cock it and then you pull the trigger, and I'm not going to dry fire this 
because I don't want to damage the firing pin. Uh, but the best place to get it is on the nub, the one, the part that sticks out. And so once you do that, you can pull it and fire it. We did find that shooting this with one hand, it actually allowed the trigger to be a little bit more accessible. For some reason, when you're shooting with two hands, you weren't putting your finger on that right spot. But I didn't really have any problems. I know Robbie Wheaton had a little more problem. But overall, it is a very minimal trigger. I'd probably like to have that a little bit bigger just to get to. Now, when it comes to the cylinder latch, one thing I do want to talk about, we'll pull this down. It's spring-loaded. Uh, it just allows you to take this in and out. I'm going to go ahead and drop the cylinder. The latch itself is screwed in. It's threaded, so it just threads right into this piece. And then there's a screw right here that threads into this piece. Uh, one thing that we did notice at the range was this rod was coming unscrewed just a little bit. It was coming out of its threads, so we just kind of tighten it up a little bit. Um, I would highly advise adding Loctite to your screw. It'll just lock it down, make it really easy. And uh, to me, that's just a real simple fix. And since that time, we haven't had any issues. But again, it just kind of lays in there, bring it in, your cylinder rod, drop it, and it just fits right in there. I mean, the fit and the finish is really nice. We have some CCI uh, 22 Magnum, and this is their A22, made for Savage Rifles actually, but this stuff works really good. Um, got 200 rounds right here. We have more as well, but we probably won't go through these 200 rounds. Now, of course, with the switch back, it pops out. I'm going to show you how to load it. Uh, just go ahead and pull down on this little latch right here, and it pulls out the cylinder rod. And then we're going to drop our cylinder. Load one at a time. It's not a fast loading pistol and you have five rounds. So you better get it done with that. Then we're going to bring the cylinder back over. Just center it up and then bring in your cylinder rod again. And you may have to do a little bit of finagling. Then pull down on that spring loaded detent and it pops it back into place. And you can carry it just like this, fully loaded. And that makes it sweet. Oh yeah, I like that. Now the switch gun out at the range, <laughs> I mean it's just a little 22 Magnum revolver. Mini revolver, shoots really well. Uh, you know that grip is long enough to where you feel like you've got a good solid grip on it. Uh, we shot it with two hands, which you can do, uh, but we also shot it with one hand. And to be honest with you, it shoots better one-handed. Uh, something about the way the trigger is, when you have those two hands on it, the trigger is made to have a little bit of some safety factor to it. And so it can be a little bit tight to get that trigger. And then when you have it with one hand, it seems to be very natural. Of course, you have to pull that hammer back with every shot because it is a single action. But it's quick to deploy and you can fire this really rapidly. Uh, the stainless steel finish is gonna hold up in all kind of weather. Uh, and of course, it just packs away so nicely. Just push that little lever forward <laughs> and then lock it down and you've got something that you can just stick in your pocket. But overall, it just functioned very well. We didn't have any kind of problems with it. We didn't even have any misfires. It just fired every time we pulled that hammer back. And the recoil on it is about nil. I mean, there's just not any recoil. Uh, sometimes with the smaller little grips on some of the mini revolvers, the recoil can really kind of pop up in your hand. But with this grip, it's a solid grip on the pistol. And again, it's so easy to slip in your pocket. I have a good friend of mine that's a U.S. Marshal, and he carries a small mini revolver in his pocket, and he calls it his get-off-me gun. And that's definitely what this is. It's a get-off-me gun. <laughs> now, when it comes to shooting the switch gun, again, half-inch barrel, you're just going to get a certain amount of accuracy. And to be honest with you, we were shooting at about seven yards, and we were peppering the target. We were hitting the target, but we, they were, the shots were all around. Moved up to about five yards, and they really centered up. Robbie got a great group at one point where he really put them all together in a really small little group except for one flyer. I think the sights are definitely very minimal and it's going to be hard to get really superb accuracy with this. But if they get that fiber optic where you can really see it, I think that'll definitely make a difference. But this gun is really made for just up close and personal. 
And like the old adage, it's three feet, three seconds, three shots. And this is definitely in that category. The MSRP on the switch gun is $449, uh, which is a little bit pricey over a lot of your standard North American arms. Uh, but this little pug, it does have the night sight, was about $387. And the typical North American revolvers run around the $300, a little bit below range. Now the two appealing points of this handgun is number one, it's easy to conceal. It's very small, uh, it takes away the shape of the gun, you slip this in your pocket, no one can really tell what this is. It could be a set of keys, it could be your billfold, it could be anything. Uh, and it's smaller than your cell phone, a little thicker, but definitely smaller than your cell phone as far as the outside silhouette dimensions. So that gives you the element of surprise, and it's really easy to get to. But the second thing is, and the way it was designed, is it makes it really quick to deploy and very simple. You need to train with this. You need to, th to think about the different operations. You need to go through it before you carry it because it's a little different. Uh, you know, we're not used to doing that. And then when we close it, you know, pushing it forward, closing it up. I just highly recommend that if you're thinking about carrying this, that you go through the motions of the operation. Deploying it is the easiest. It's the most simple. So I just pull down and it opens up. Pretty intuitive. Closing it, sometimes I want to press it. I want to mess with it. And, but it's very natural if you have your hand on the back of the grip just to push forward and then it'll start to close. And you hear that satisfying click when it goes in right here. And so that's really the big thing, and it's very safe to carry. And so deploy it, bring it out, cock the hammer, pull the trigger. It's a revolver, and you know it's going to be very reliable, which it was for us. So guys, a small option for concealed carry, uh, whether you use it for a backup, which really is what I would like to use it for, or if you really need to be super discreet, this will fit in your pocket. No one will know the difference. And again, it's so easy to bring this thing out and to deploy it, I mean, it's just like pop and you're ready to go. And it does keep it safe because the trigger is nestled right here. And of course you still have to pull the hammer back. So it's a very safe gun to carry as well. To me, it just makes one of those options that when you don't know what to do, you can throw this in your pocket and you've got something to carry. And we really appreciate Standard Manufacturing for getting in touch with us and sending us the switch gun. <laughs> this has been a lot of fun. And again, it's so innovative and different. Uh, but yet it is very useful. Now we really appreciate Sportsman's Guide for being one of our sponsors. And they give a $20 off every $100 or more purchase using Such, no zero zero. And they have all kind of outdoor related, camping, hiking, firearms, you name it, they've got it. But one thing that I use them probably the most for is their military surplus from around the world. And if you join their buyers club, you get a better price and you get free shipping on most items. So check out Sportsman's Guide. It's a great resource. Be strong, be of good courage. God bless America. Long live the Republic. see so many guns come around new manuf you know okay. you know guys carrying something none of this sounds it sounds like I'm just freaking crazy the standard manufacturing company switch gun let's check it out and then just load these one at a time this is definitely not the fastest would have been bad if you just shot once or twice blah, 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 blah. cowboy and this is a shooting range and I understand that Okay. One more time!